Christians and Jews don't make. We're the only one to make this claim. The claim that we make that they don't make is that the Quran is the last revelation. Now why is that important? That's important because it doesn't, the Quran was not only for the Arabs 1400 years ago in the desert, but the Quran is as relevant today for the people in modern United States of America, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, then that means that the Quran, because it's the last book, no book is coming after it. And you have to have faith in the Quran, and you must have faith in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why, and brothers and sisters, all you got to do is just study this. Just know this fact, that no prophet or combination of prophets have even one, one thousandth of details like we have in the details of the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's for a reason. I mean, you think about all the details. You take all the nine volumes of Bukhari Hadith, Muslim Hadith, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi, and thousands and thousands of uh, Malik, and Ahmed ibn Hanbu, uh, and all of the, all of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe millions of Hadith, so that we can better understand the Quran and Sunnah and know how to live better in the United States of America in the year 2008. If you don't believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, you're not going to talk and act like you believe it. It is a show. And you'll be like everyone else, and you won't critique the society to help them. And you'll imitate them because you don't believe what you have is the truth. Now, now for article. It's a very deep article. Let me give you some excerpts. This is the key sentence here. Daniel Pipe said, 500 years ago, Jews, Christians, and Muslims agreed that owning slaves was acceptable. But paying interest on money was not. Let's stop for a moment. We're talking about the bad. We're talking about interest. Then you back to saying, you say, no, it is not. It didn't come with the Quran. It was already here. Christ, Jews, Christians, and Muslims agreed that paying interest was not acceptable. Okay? After, listen to the words, bitter and protracted debates, bitter, bitter and protracted debates, Jews and Christians changed their mind. You with me? Now, I don't know about you, I would have loved to hear the debate. <laughs> okay? So the first question you have to ask yourself is, as just students, intelligent students, how come the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims agreed that paying interest was prohibited? Why did they agree? Because they had a common source, and that was revelation. All revelation has always made interest prohibited. Jews knew it, Christians knew it, Muslims knew it. But the Jews and the Christians, after bitter, bitter debates, it wasn't like, okay, let's not, let's, let's, let's not do it no more. It was a debate. Would you like to have heard the debate? Right? What's the debate? What was the debate? What was the reason? What was the rationale for making legal what God made prohibited? Everybody endorses slavery or has any religious qualms about paying reasonable interest. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Question, what is reasonable interest? Is it 10%? Is it 9%? 8%? 8. 8%. 8%. What's reasonable interest? You tell me. You tell me what's reasonable interest. You tell me. You don't know. You tell me. What's reasonable interest? No clue. What about for Muslim? What's, what's unreasonable interest for Muslim? There you go. The old 
old way. <laughs> what do you mean the old way? Quran is something. Um, now this, is, this, is, this is a great one. How many of you um, have your own homes? I mean your dad, mom. <laughs> okay, don't worry, I'm not connecting on that. Don't worry. Don't worry. You okay? To enable, this is not here, you're pious now. He continues. To enable pious Muslims to avoid interest, an Islamic financial industry worth an estimated $150 billion has developed. You know what that means? Brothers and sisters, there's a way that you can't get your house without interest with this new industry that was developed. You want to know about it? Hmm? You want to know about it? Okay, I'll send them to talk to you. Muslims must emulate their fellow monotheists. Emulate who? <laughs> uh <-huh. coughs> By modernizing their religion. It behooves everyone, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to help modernize this civilization. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon them, whom we emulate, said, you will follow those who came before you step by step and inch by inch so that if they crawl in the hole of a lizard, you follow right behind. What he's saying to you, if you want to be successful, don't follow them, follow me. Now, let me say a few things about us and, and, and how this ties in Ramadan and the aftermath of Ramadan. And I'm going to try to do this. It's now... About 20 after 7, right? I should be finished no later than 8. African American members of the Congress who look out for the interests of their constituency, the black people. And the, and the motto of the Congressional Black Caucus is black people have neither permanent friends nor permanent enemies, just permanent interest. Now, let me say something about you. I'm going to talk about you for a minute. Okay? It's okay. And you. It's okay? Share Khalid, you too. We'll talk about you. You too, for sure. Definitely you. <laughs> and sisters, you too. Let me say something about us. And I'm gonna be real with you. I wanna be real with you. Right? Because if we're not real with each other, I can't I can't help you. I don't wanna, you know, entertain you and not be real with you. Let me first say what the prophet said, be some blessing be upon us, then I'm gonna give you some hints from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and then we try to tie it up and be out. We'll be finished soon, inshallah. First, what the Prophet said, this hadith has is called Hadith Qudsi, that Allah is saying this, and I want you to listen very carefully. Ya ibadi, kum kum dalun, illa man hadaytu, fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my servants, every one of you are misguided. Unless I guide you, therefore ask me, and the weapons that we have, or tools, or power, is dua. I'll prove it to you, supplication. I'll prove it to you, Allah said Quran. Qala rabbuka udhuni astajib lakum. And your Lord said, call on me, call on me. I will answer you. Would you agree that Allah can do whatever he wants to do? Well, that's in Allah, yes, I know my lead. Allah said, you can do whatever you want to do. Allah can do whatever he wants to do. And I give you a million examples of miracles that have happened in the history of man. So why are we calling him more? Call out a wickle or the only as the jibblakum. But then the Bible said, peace and blessing be upon him, here's the hand. This is the dua he made. Allahumma, inni a'udhukam min da'watin la yustajabu laha. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from a supplication that is not heard, not answered. Right? So a lot of us say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, But then we go to the lotto. You <laughs> got my point? Hmm? Get my point? So Allah said, Yeah. Is that Sa'al Kaibadi Anni Fa'ini Kaibu Jibu Da'wa Tada'i Da'a'i 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 Da'a'i
I listen to the supplication of the supplicants when they supplicate me, but let them listen to me. Hear what I'm saying. What are you saying? I'm saying, make this a lot, five times a day. I'm saying, fast in the month of Ramadan. I'm saying, I know you like the women. Oh, man. This is me I'm talking to, right? This is me. This is you and I, right? I know, brother. But I'm saying, yes, Allah knows that. He, he made it like he, he made you like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. But get married first. Be before marriages. You do it tonight. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm licensed by the state. <laughs> Any, I, I'll be right here. And let me know. Uh, uh, I'm out of hand. <laughs> we can do it. I'm sure we can do it public or private. Better, better to do that. Make it legal. Better to do that. Better to do that. Shaq Khalid, can you perform? You can perform too. He can move both of them, man. The two of us must. We can knock it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> what hour are we finished? So, 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 so what happened is that the truth of the matter is human beings know what we do. We are self destructive. All of us are self destructive. And we undermine our own success and health in this society and in the world. We do. All of us. And know, you know where it began? It began with our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah said, don't do something. He did. And from the very beginning, there, there are some people at least that will be punished in eternally, that will be in the hellfire forever. Jews preach it. Christians preach it. And Muslims preach it. Hardly being a jihad ever there, they'll be in the hellfire forever. And some will never come out. Jews preach it, Christians preach it, and Muslims preach it. Now the question is, who are those people and how do we prevent ourselves from being among those people who be in hellfire forever? You know, one thing that I learned when I read the book, when I read the Quran, you know, and Ramadan is a great time to read the Quran, read the whole Quran, right? You know what, that recently I, I came to the conclusion, and I've read it before a million times, but it seems as if somehow this, this year when I was reading the Quran, a word that came up over and over again, almost every page, and you'll never imagine what that word is. Azab. Azabun Alim. Azabul Jahannam. Azab is punishment. Punishment. Now, let me tell you the problem and how, how Jews, Christians, and Muslims, how they tackle this problem. Brothers, let me tell you something that I want you to I want you to get it. I want you to get nothing else that I say tonight. I want you to get this point. If you disobey Allah, every disobedience, every unless He does something about it. Now when you start adding up the sins that we've committed, even since Ramadan was over. I'm, asking, I'm telling you to look at your own self. Since Ramadan is over, I want you to ask yourself what sins have you committed since Ramadan is over. I'm not talking about your brother, your sister, or I'm talking about you. What you have done since Ramadan has been over. And every sin that you commit, Allah has to take us into account. This is why the Christians say that the wages of sin are death. Now, how did Christians deal with this? They said that God has to punish us for what we've done. So the only thing that's going to save us is that God has to come down Himself and die for us. So hence, Son of God, Jesus, or God Himself. That's the theology which we, we reject. But the, and, and, and so therefore the Christians say, it ain't your good works, it's grace. It's the grace of God. Just believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus. And that's the grace of God. And you go to jail. Jesus is not God. Jesus is not the Son of God. Jesus is Jews. The Jews are saying, it's your good works, and only your works that can save you. So you got to do good works, you got to pray, you got to fast. What do the Muslims say? What do the Muslims say? Hmm? What do the Muslims say? Hmm? What do the Muslims say? Live in Allah. Huh? Again? Live in Allah, Muhammad. Believe in Allah, Muhammad. Allah, Muhammad. That's it? This belief? <laughs> Hmm? Make Talba. That's part of it? Hmm? Obedience. Obedience, yes, that's part of it. 
<laughs> yes. Actually, believe it or not, the Islamic position is a little bit in the middle of the Jewish position and the Christian position. I want to tell you what I mean. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, great deeds by themselves can't save you. That's what the prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him. So you, even you, messenger of Allah, he said, even me, except for Allah's grace. So the combination of the grace of Allah and good deeds, and we hope that the good deeds, Allah will accept them, and, Allah, and really it's Allah's grace that we go to paradise, and that's it. Don't think, you, it's a mistake for you to think, well, I've got, I've got all this brain. How many, and I want you to be honest with you, I want you to raise your hand, how many have noticed in your individual selves and in the collective community a lull since the end of Ramadan? And somehow the iman has decreased a little bit, raise your hand. Okay. My hand is up too, by the way. I'm not exempt. I'm not like, um, you know, I'm one of you. Me and you, we just be the same. Alright? In fact, what I can do, I give you the mic and I can sit down. That's how much we the same. Now, now, my sister, let me tell you something. It's like, why? Why the drop off? See, I used to be unrealistic. I used to think that, you know, I used to complain that, oh, Muslims, you know, we're so good during the month of Ramadan, we're so spiritual, we're so giving, and we so on a high level, and then Ramadan is over, we go right back down. And really, it's to be expected to go back down. You know why? Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this month of Ramadan special. I mentioned in the beginning, إِذَا جَعَ Ramadan فُتِّهَا أَبْوَابُ Jannah. When Ramadan comes, the, the gates of Jannah open. Allah's mercy is there. And I give, you, I give an example also. Do you know that Layla Tukadra, <coughs> according to one tradition, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that there are so many angels on earth in that night. I don't know why. I mean, pebbles in the whole world. I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, pebbles. <coughs> Go down there, man. You look at the pe how many pebbles right down there, downstairs, right? Okay. Now here it is. I'm in my conclusion now. Human nature, and it's this: we are absolute sinners. We're bad people, man. Better be bad. We, all of us, be bad. We're really bad people. We are. I mean, we mean to do well, but we keep falling. And look, look at this. I'm going to show you this. I won't finish. Allah is great. Allah is really a lot of great. One thing I want to say, I'm going to close with this. Do not squander all that you gained on the month of Ramadan. Remind me to come to this, right? Do not squander all that you gained on the month of Ramadan because you gained so much brothers and sisters you can't even count it. But some of us are going to squander it and I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. Now, I'm going to come back to here. Now, I'm, now, I'm going to tell you how I am. If someone asks me to do something, I'm saying, okay, what's in it for me? Right? Let me, right? What's in it for me? What am I going to get? I'm going to get something from it, right? So if Allah is telling us to do it, not only does Allah tell us to do something, but it gives us a reward. <coughs> what reward does He offer us if we fast on month of Ramadan? Hmm? Tafur. Hmm? Tafur. Forgiveness. Let's see what He said. Now let me show you something. This is, this is something, I'm just be detective for a minute. من صوم رمضان إيمانه وارتساب غفر له ما تقدم من ذبيه. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with faith, seeking a reward from Allah, Allah does what? Forgives his sin. Is that something worthy for us? Is that something that we need? Yes. Absolutely. Every year, same thing. You've been you've been doing Ramadan for how many years now? Hmm. 22 years, man. You probably started when you were one year old, huh? <laughs> Nine years, I'm going fast. <laughs> right? Every year, the same thing. Every year, the same thing. Now, now, check this out. How many of you went to the masjid going on and on? What did you find there? You find a lot of people, right? And after Salat Isha, what did you find? All right. How many of you attempted to stay up a little bit seeking later to come? Any of you stayed up the whole night? Oh, good, 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 you, you, good, good. Who 
like trying to fall asleep. Good, good, good. This is good. This is good. That's a good thing. Why are you doing, man? Why are you trying to stay up? You're crazy. <laughs> You're crazy. Why are you, why are you staying up? Why? Huh? Score point. Good. That's, that's right. What kind of points would you score? Yes. Men are related to Qaza. Whoever stands related to Qaza. Iman wahdisa min kufira zahu min taqadma min dambi. Allah will forgive them sins. Hmm. Forgive the sins for fasting. Forgive the sins for doing tarawih. Forgive the sins from praying later to Qaza. Let's go one more step. Aisha radiallahu anha asked her husband, the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, what happens if we observe Lady Tukada, or we find Lady Tukada, or we think Lady Tukada, what should we say? What should we say? What should we say? Again? Allahumma Allah Akbar. 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 Oh man, here go again. Oh Allah, you are the forgiven. You love forgiveness. You love to do that. So forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. How many of you ever made Hajj to Mecca? Raise your hand. Made pilgrimage to Mecca. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many want to make it? Let me tell you something. You know it, man. <laughs> so why you know it? When we went, finally, what year did you go? 2005. Who went before 2005? What year? 2002. What year? 80. Huh? 1980. 1980? Yeah. Oh, God, boy. You're the one I want to talk to. <laughs> How much was it in 1980? The price of one? Yes, one. Our whole family went. Uh, give me one. Then? Yes. Five, six hundred bucks? Five or six hundred bucks. Now, I think it's wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> but about $1,000? About $1,500? Shreve, you made hearts? What year did you make this, Shreve? 04 and 07. Which one? 04 and 07. Which one? Uh, 04, 2004, and uh, 2007. Seven, okay. Now, but the point is, how much is it now? Six grand. Hmm? Six, Six thousand. <coughs> Seven thousand. <000. coughs> Yeah, wow, right? You get my point? So the prophet says, let me, let me give you some advice. The prophet says, Hurry up. Do good deeds. You keep on waiting. By the time you go, it's going to be 20 years. You know what happened? Now, your children will be at New York University, right? 20 years from now. And when the Hajj will be fifty thousand dollars, <laughs> you're gonna say we only have to spend seven thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 you're crazy, man. So you gotta, you gotta have to do it, man. In fact, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what most scholars say. Most scholars say that when you have the ability, Minister Ali Sadiq. When you have the ability to make pilgrimage, you have the money, you have the wherewithal, and you don't do it as a sin. There are people who have been all over the world. They go to Paris, they go to London, they go to Africa, they go to Asia, and have been the Hajj. And so Allah says, the stipulation, those who are able to make it. And when, you be, when you're able to do it, you should try to do it, inshallah. Well, let me ask you this question. Hajj is so difficult, sisters, that the Prophet called it your jihad. The hearts of women is a jihad. It's a real struggle. For men, it's a struggle. All the brothers of Botelia and the sisters who make women, it's a struggle. Let me ask you this question. What do you get? What reward do you get for making the filters? It's all the same. That you will come back as if today your mother gave you birth. <coughs> to say this. In my conclusion. Don't squander what you have gained. Two things that you'll notice about Ramadan. Number one, what it did for you now. What it did for you now, it was a training. Helped build your character. Helped get you to lower your gaze. Helped us to tell the truth. 
Help us to give in, in, in charity. Help us to do good deeds. A lot of hasana. So it was a training for this life. In addition to that, Hajj was absolutely, uh, fasting was absolutely chips to be used to negotiate later. Let me tell you what I mean. A friend of mine, his name is Abdullah. He lives in Columbus, Ohio. He went to Ghana in Africa to visit. And when he came back, he had thousands of dollars of CDs. You know what CDs are? You know CDs are? Not CDs. <laughs> CDs. That's the money of the people of Ghana for CDs. So he came to New York to visit me. He said, Imam Saraj, I want you to help me. I want you from Ghana. Could you exchange them? And, uh, and the man said, no, sorry. I said, no problem. Called another bank. He said, no. The third bank, the guy laughed at me. He said, no one will exchange this money. No one. The money is useless here. My advice to you, if you ever go to Ghana and you got CDs, exchange it before you leave. I know what you're saying. I'm never going to Ghana. <laughs> yes, you are. You're already in Ghana. Because <coughs> we have something in our pockets right now. Something in the bank. Something in stocks. That has its value now. If you die, it will do you no good. The Prophet said three things for a person when they die. Yet the bull may it salata. For your Jew, it's nanny. For your call, why? Two things go back. Your family members go back, your wealth, it goes back. And think about this. Just think about this. Everything that you possess right now is gonna be belonging to someone else. The moment you die is no longer yours. Your legal heirs will inherit it. But the thing that will follow you are your good deeds and your bad deeds. What is a muflis? You don't know muflis? Anybody know the word muflis? No. Hmm? No, Musa no. What's a muflis? What's a muflis? Muflis Yani Fakir. Huh? Yeah, Fakir. It's, it's more than fuck it, more than a poor person. The Muflis, they said, they said, yeah, so a Muflis is a person, la dirham la, la dirham, they have no money, no mata'a, no nothing. And he said, no, a Muflis in my community are those who will come, yom al qiyamah, be salatin, was siyamin, was zakatin. They will come, they will have fasted Ramadan, all the students of New York University. All the Muslims in New York City, they fasted, they got all of this, they fast, they prayed, they got all of that. They gave the cat, they got all of that. But a shaitan man had that. They cursed this person out. Well, Qadifa had that. They, they, um, Qadifa. Qadifa had that, Qadifa. Slandered that person. Let's stop there for a minute. You know what I mean by slander? You ever talk about someone else? You ever gossip about someone else? Even if it's true, think about it. Think about that, right? They, uh, 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 they stole the wealth of some, stole something from somebody. Uh, they beat this person or they killed this person. What's going to happen? Allah is going to take it. All good deeds that you do for Allah, you can lose them, you can squander them in Yom al for what you do here. And then if you run out, Allah will take the bad deeds of that person and dump them on you and throw you in the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, character is what Allah and Messenger say. You want to be something? Do what the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. Say Allah wherever you are. Don't just fear him in Ramadan. If you think that Ramadan was it, you're supposed to fear Allah in Ramadan, and you can go back to business as usual, don't do it. Because we should fear Allah not only in Ramadan, in the month of Shawwal. And that's why, by the way, the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan and then follows with six days of Shawwal. He didn't say six days of Muharram, Rajab, but Shawwal. It's as if they fasted the whole year. So we want to keep the spirit of Ramadan. Ramadan is over. Do those six days. And that will help us.
So brothers and sisters, this is my introduction. Brother Khalid, you bring me back so I can do part two, inshallah. This is just the beginning, inshallah. May Allah bless you. I love you guys. Really, I love you. As the Arabs say, I love you too much. May Allah bless you. And keep on strengthening you. To keep on doing good. And brothers and sisters, your great challenge is that you're here in the university. I know what it's like to be in the university. This is what the brothers will tell you. Brothers, what's the most difficult part of the year? Summer. So, this is too <laughs> <laughs> no. I remember, i never forget this day, man. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm finished. I have, to, I have to tell you, this is a true story. This is a true story, right? I'm walking with a brother one day, one summer, in Brooklyn. I'm walking down the street with a brother. He said, he said, you remember the summer? Look at that. <laughs> and I looked. <laughs> Why did you tell me? <laughs> it's difficult. But if we do it as a team and keep feeding ourselves for and Sunnah and being with the Muslims, it will help, especially on the Commerce campus. So may Allah bless you, brothers and sisters, and have mercy upon you. I mean, Assalamu alaikum we don't know the, the, the secrets of people. We, we, can't, we can't really judge. Um, I, a long time ago, I got out of the business of judging people. So I can say, theoretically, it could be a person who could be a ruler and do bad things, but Allah may forgive them. And, and, I, and I'll tell you why it's important to know this. There's two verses in the Quran that will sound like a contradiction if you don't understand it. And that is, Allah says in the Quran, never to despair of Allah's mercy, because He forgives every sin. Every sin. So, don't ever think that whatever a person do, don't you condemn them to the hellfire, because maybe Allah will forgive that person. Now, the other uh, ayah from the Quran, the other ayah says that Allah forgives everything except the shirk. Not a contradiction. The one where Allah says Allah forgives every sin, that means why you're alive. There are millions of people, maybe there are billions of people who are in shirk, who take shahada, Allah forgive them. But if you die in shirk, there's no forgiveness. That's what he said himself. And the Prophet, he confirmed it, alayhi salat waslam, he would be so, uh, the Prophet is what Allah said in Quran, rahmatin lil alameen, is a mercy. That Allah, the Prophet will go to Allah on Yom Qiyamah and ask to get people out of the hellfire. And finally, those whom the Quran had imprisoned, and they would never get out. I mean, I, 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 that, I can't, that, that, tell me, okay, you be in the hellfire for a billion years, okay. Okay, at least you get out, right? But a billion years, and then another billion, another billion, and another and then I in Quran Allah said, and the punishment will not be made light at all, will not be yukhafif, then yukhafif won't be made I seek refuge with Allah from that, all of us, inshallah. So brother, theoretically, Allah wa God knows. Yes? I have a question. Uh, I deeply believe uh, that the Arab, the Muslim, they are, we are where we are today is because we have left the Quran. Yeah. Okay? And I, what I want to ask you is, um, you know here we have too many different nationalities and we live a different way of life. Yeah. <coughs> How, what will be the way to approach all of us uh, about like uh, like a way that motivates all of us and all different levels to, you know, respect the Quran again and, you know, nourish the Ummah again. Because where we are today is because we have left the Quran. So Allah, I, I agree. agree. You know, I agree. You know, uh, the, the sisters who wear hijab. Uh, there's no iman in the brother's heart. Uh, the fact, but you know, it's a great question, brother. None, none of us, there's no one that has a formula to say, Brother, Imam Suraj came to New York University and he gave us the answer. It's not going to happen. And the reason I know it's not going to happen because it's too many hadith. What people will do, what Muslims will do, they will cut the necks of each other, they will kill each other, and a lot of things. We will go against the, the sunnah. 
The only thing we can do is keep they will get it. Some people won't they won't they won't accept it. They won't accept it. They won't they'll 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 deviate from the Quran. You know, um so all you can do make dua invite, give the dawah as much as you can, brother, and do the best that you can. And leave the rest in the hands of the Mecca. And I, I stayed there for a while. And one of our teachers, he, he gave an analogy, which I thought was, was great. You know, most of us have cell phones, right? And, and if you want to call someone, you have to have their number, right? And not only must you have the number, but you have to have the right area code. If you don't have the right area code, then you're not going to get them. And so he said the same thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to call a lot at the right number. And one of them, there's a, a couple of them, the one I mentioned, and uh, he does when my servants asked about me, I'm there. I listened to the supplication, but let them hear me. So the hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, explains about this man who's on a long journey, hair is disheveled, clothing is raggedy, and he raises his hand, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, wa haram. His, his food is haram, his drink is haram, he's nervous with haram things. How can Allah answer his dua? So the first thing we want to try to do is try to do the halal, eat the halal, drink the halal, etc. So do those things that's halal, that's number, number one. And, um, and then uh, all of the things, all of the things in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message, that means that we're going to be perfect, we're, not, we're going to be imperfect. But we try our best to. One more. <laughs> yes? One, two. Okay, couple. Yes, yes sir. You and then you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, me? Yes. Well, I have a question. Um, you know how, like, the vast majority of the people in the world are not Muslims? Right. Believers? What if they were, like, some, they never heard of the word of Islam? You know what? Yeah, they're going to go to hell. Like, it's, a, it's, a, hell it's, it's a fair question. Um, the Allah SWT, Allah gives us a hint in the Quran that the reason that Allah sends the prophets so that the people will have no hujjah, no argument against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is just. One of the things that you find in the Quran, it is impossible for Allah to be unjust. So the scholars they argue about this issue. What is, how how would, it, would how would it be? And I didn't find a particular hadith on it, but just with the scholars' opinion, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give these people all those who never had an opportunity to hear Islam, he will give them an opportunity at some point. And Allah knows when. But I think the thing that you and I should be comforted with is that Allah is not unjust. That there will, there's got to be some mechanism, however it is, there's got to be some mechanism by Allah so that the person that didn't get the truth will, will be able to get it. That's, that's a critical point. And by the way, that helps us in terms of our job, our responsibility. There's a lot of people out there don't know about Islam. We have to take the responsibility to do it. We got to do more dawah. Is it good to you that you accumulate during Ramadan? Help you to be forgiven for the missed prayers. It, it, um, the um, scholars of Islam often say that the what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talks about the forgiveness of sins for Ramadan for making pilgrimage to Mecca. All of these are minor sins. Now. Uh, in terms of making up the Salah, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him told us this, and this is what I'm going to go on, is that when you forget and you miss your Salah, make it up when you remember. I would advise you that if you owe Allah, you owe him Salah, pay him back. Now what you might do, if, let's say you owe, let's say 10 prayers, and say, you know what, I didn't make that prayer. Whenever you go to pray, Maybe instead of doing a sunnah prayer, do one of the prayers you miss you know, as a practical way. But make them up. Now, um, I've heard scholars debate this issue. What if you had so many prayers to make up? Let's say you had a, let's say you start practicing for four years. Should you make up those four years of prayers? Two opinions. One opinion, I forgot the Imam who said it, he said that, that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that the abandonment of salah is kufr. So his position is that while you weren't making prayer, you were actually can pray. So you didn't have to make one, uh, one of the other scholars says that you should make it up. And, and, uh, Allah, and I'm, not, I'm not really sure. But I, but I do think that um, if you owe Salah, especially if it's not an unreasonable, like unreasonable interest, <laughs> I, I think you should try to make it up. Because, because even so, it's at least 
and the wafil. At least Allah will give you barakah. You know, the Prophet said, "Da'ma yaribuk illa ma la la yaribuk." Leave off that was doubtful for that was going to cause you doubt. Doubt. So I would tend to lean toward making it up. If you owe it, make it up. Allah will Brothers and sisters, thank you very much, and may Allah bless you. Shukran. On behalf of um, the Islamic Center and the uh, United Muslim Association, we want to just give you a small vote of gratitude. Um, Jazakum al-Khair everyone at